Hello everyone and welcome to a new Sega Mega Drive Stroke Genesis game dev tutorial. In this video we're going to create permanent enemy types which will be very useful when we add more enemies in the future as well as adding new levels. And in order to do this we're going to get further practice on two concepts we've covered in the previous two lessons i.e. enums and structs. So of course we've already got this enemy struct here we created a couple of lessons ago and we've got an array of these enemy structs to play within our level. Well that's perfectly fine, I want to change it so this array of enemy structs, instead of having to put what graphic it uses and so on, we can simply give the name of the enemy from a list and then it automatically load the correct graphic and anything else to do with that enemy that doesn't change throughout the level. And if you're still not 100% sure what I mean by that description, don't worry, just follow along and it'll all become clear. The first step will be to head over to our header file, our enemy's header file and create a new struct. So this time instead of calling it enemy I'm going to call this struct enemy type. Now what we want to put into this struct is basically anything about the enemy that is immutable that doesn't change. One of these things will obviously be the graphics used. So for example if we're going to use the boomerang enemy then we want to always want to use the boomerang graphic. If we're using a sniper enemy then we need the sniper graphic and so on. So we can simply copy and paste that from our uh, already existing enemy struct. Another thing we can include in our new enemy type struct is the number of hit points an enemy has. While this is something that is going to change as you play the level, for example as you hit an enemy and they lose some hit points, we're going to want them to start the level with a certain number of hit points so we can add that hit. And the third and final field I'm going to add today is the palettes used. Organizing palettes is a very important part of Mega Drive development and while you could take a very simple approach, for example using PAL0 for the background, PAL1 for the foreground, PAL2 for the player and PAL3 for the enemies. We don't have to use PAL3 for enemies, we can, they can use PAL0, PAL1, PAL2 and this may differ from enemy to enemy so I think it's a good field to add. If we take a look at our original enemy struct you can see that there's lots of things that we don't want to add for, to our enemy type struct. So one for example is the status. This is the kind of uh, state that the enemy is currently in so they could be you know, attacking, this is like their AI behavior. They could be attacking or retreating or they could be injured or many other things. So this is going to change that level so we don't need to add this. And obviously the X and Y position of the enemy at any one time is going to change throughout the level. So this is not like a permanent feature of the enemy. They could be any X, Y position. The sprite field refers to an individual instance of an enemy within a level. We're going to be using this whenever we need to change the animation or add the enemy within a level or maybe remove it when the enemy dies so obviously this needs to be within the regular enemy struct since there's always something that's changing all the time. The next field hit points is interesting because this is something we're going to need in both structs. We need it in the regular enemy struct because this is something that's going to be updated all throughout the level as the player hits the enemies. But it also needs to be in our enemy type struct because we need to set the um, health of each enemy at a certain point when the level begins and to make that extra clear let's change this to max health. And of course each enemy of a certain type will have a certain number of hit points and this might change enemy from enemy although now it's good I think most of the enemies die within one hit. The final field, the sprite definition, the graphic is actually something that we don't need in the regular enemy struct anymore because this will be the graphic use and this is not going to change throughout the level, this is going to be a permanent feature of each enemy type so we can actually delete that and then afterwards we're going to need to delete it from the array too but for now actually I'll leave it in and we'll focus on our enemy types before we, do, we start changing the actual enemy array. Just as previously we had an array of enemy shrugs, we're now going to create another array, this time with enemy types. And it's in this array where we're going to store all our permanent enemy type information. As with the other array, begin with extern, then write struct, then we do the name of the struct we're using, which in this case is the enemy type. Next up we're going to have to give the array a name, so with the other array we called it current enemies. With this one we can give it, call it something like uh, enemy type list. Next up we have to put the size of the array, now this will simply be how many unique enemy types we have in our game. For Alex Kidd in Shinobi World I think probably 10 will be enough, you can see we have 4 here so far and I think including the bosses I think there's probably fewer than 10, it's quite a small game but of course we can change this in future but for now let's put it as 10. So far the format looks very similar to how we defined our current enemies array but we are actually going to need to do something a little bit different. We're going to need to add the const word be after extern and before struct. Just a reminder in case you don't recall from previous lessons but putting const in front of an, a variable or an array means that stays in ROM, it doesn't get loaded into RAM. For the current enemies array we obviously we need to load this into RAM because the values are going to be changing all the time, the x and y, x and y coordinates of the enemies as well as their current AI status, how many hit points they have and so on, it's going to be constantly changing as the level plays. 
However, our enemy types list, our an array of enemy type structs, the information that's not going to change is going to be the permanent um, information to do with that enemy. So for example, what graphic they're using and their max number of health points and so on. Since we only have 64 kilobytes of RAM on our Mega Drive, we're going to want to save this as much as possible. So anything we can keep on the ROM and not load into RAM, we should keep it that way. You don't have to do this, but just for the sake of neatness, I think this all looks a bit better. I'm going to take the, um, in the header file, I'm going to take the enemy type struct definition and the definition of the array and simply cut it, cut and paste it at the very top. But I said it's not essential, you need to do this. And then in our C file, in the corresponding C file, we're going to start putting the information into the array. At the moment, the struct is quite small. It only has three uh, types of information. The first one is going to be the graphics. So we're simply going to do the graphic for each uh, enemy. So our first enemy type will be at zero will be the boomerang enemy. Now, when it comes to their max health and the padded use for each enemy type, um, I'm not sure. We haven't decided what we're going to do with this yet. So I'm just putting some random numbers just to show you how it works. So if you just watch here as I put our enemy array together, our enemy types list together. So we're going to have four enemies and the other six, because remember we've got 10 entries into our array. So the other six, I'm just going to put some placeholder values. There's going to be kind of garbage values. And as we add more enemies, then we put the correct information into it later. So at the first, the zero place, we're going to have the boomerang guy. Then we're going to have the basic ninja. Then we're going to have the stealth ninja. And then finally, we're going to have the sniper ninja. I said before that since we're going to be uh, putting the graphic information within our enemy types list, we're not going to need it in our regular um, enemies struct anymore. So I'm going to delete that field from there. And I'm also, also of course, going to need to update the uh, current enemies array too to delete that graphical information. At the same time, I'm going to add an additional field to our regular enemy struct, and that is the enemy type. So this is going to be which enemy we're actually going to be using. So that's going to be a U8 number. So for now, let's just put it as zero. And this number, of course, refers to the position of the enemy in the enemy types list. So our current enemies range from zero to three, but instead of writing these as numbers, we've really got a better way, and that is to do these as enums instead. So I'm going to call this little group enemy names and then I'm simply going to write our uh, enemy names in the order in which they appear within the enemy types list. And once that is done, rather than putting numbers into our current enemies array, I can now write the name of the each enemy, which each enemy want to use. And this is obviously a lot clearer for us as humans to read. So the code looks a lot much more readable, a lot better now. We're almost there now, but first we have to make some changes to our uh, functions, for example, to create enemy functions. We are now getting an error within that function because, of course, our regular enemy struct no longer has the graphic field. Instead, I'm going to replace it with the enemy type, which is the one we just recently added. This is, of course, a regular 8-bit number, and this is going to refer to the position within the um, enemy types list. Now, we need to get the graphical information from that list. So back in the create enemies function, instead of getting the information from the um, current enemies uh, array, we're going to get it from the enemies list array. But we're going to be using that um, enemy type from the enemy, the current enemies array to put it within the square brackets because that's the position within the enemy types list array that we're going to get the graphical information from. And of course, that field within our enemy type struct is the graphic field. So we're going to, at the end, we're going to need to put a dot, then write graphic. So remember, anything within those square brackets is simply its position within the array. So um, if the enemy type is zero, then that'll be the boomerang enemy according to our enums. So we simply get the graphic from, and because it's getting the dot graphic, we're simply going to get the information from the graphics at zero at the zero position of the um, the enemy types list array. And if you don't fully understand yet, don't worry, we're going to repeat this a couple more times right now. One of these will be with the palette user. Rather than hard coding which palette's going to be using for each enemy, because this will obviously change now from enemy to enemy, we're going to do the same process. We do enemy types list within the square brackets, we do the um, current enemies dot um, enemy type, and then instead of dot graphic, we use the dot palette used. And again, this will take the information from the enemies list array just to take I use either PAL0, PAL1, PAL2, or PAL3. Third and finally, we're going to do the same, this time for the number of hit points each enemy starts the level with. Now, we've already duplicated this information within our regular current enemies array, but rather than having to carefully remember and match up each enemy type with each maximum number of hit points it's going to start the level with, instead it'd be better just to put whatever value we want into the current enemies array and simply during the create um, enemies function, 
we can simply make the um, number of hit points equal to the max health of each particular enemy type. And that's exactly what I have done here. And just to break down the equation, we're making the hit points of each enemy within the current enemy's array equal to the max health within the enemy types list. And the position within that list is contained within the square brackets, which in this case is the enemy type from the current enemies, which will be 0 to 4, depending on whether it's the boomerang, basic ninja, stealth or sniper. And if we save and compile, you can see it's all working fine. The enemies are a little bit off in terms of their colors, some of them, because of the way we've you know, assigned the pedals, but we will deal with that later on. But if we change the name of the enemies here, we can then save and recompile again, and we'll get different results each time. And of course, now it's much easier to manipulate that current enemies array than it was before. We simply change the name of the enemy and it changes the graphic and everything for us. In the next lesson, we're going to be adding another field to that new enemy type struct, which will be the enemy AI, so that each enemy has its own enemy AI. So I'm going to show you how to do that using something called function pointers. Okay, there's nothing left to do else to thank everyone for watching. And if you're interested in this type of content, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm interested in this. And if you'd like to support my work further, as well as get um, access to a download link of the code used in today's lesson, then I put my Patreon in the video description below, and any support is much appreciated. You won't go unrewarded. Until next time. Farewell.